Okay, so this time we're going to see if we can fix the multiplex in the radio. That would be the last thing uh, to fix in this thing. <coughs> so here you can see what I'm talking about. I'm measuring across that connection, which should be perfect continuity. And you see it measures, right now it's down to 4.5 ohms, but still, still a bad connection. So I ended up uh, soldering the... Uh, I see directly into the circuit here because I tried getting a socket but it fell apart so I just soldered it directly in here and uh, it didn't work anyway it got it still got hot so bad connections had nothing to do with the multiplex not working so then I after that I lifted every component so the IC would just be isolated and it would be connected to nothing else but uh, VCC and ground and it still got hot which pretty much indicates that the IC went bad but that begs the question of why why uh, why would the replacement IC I put in there get screwed up in the same way as the old one and actually I, what I came up with is that if you remember me mentioning I don't know if I mentioned it or if you watched the previous videos or whatever but on pin 27, pin 27 is the the pin that grounds the uh, stereo indicator light. And so what they have going here is that B plus, which is 30 volts or so, comes into a resistor to one side of the diode, I mean of the LED, and then from the LED through this resistor, and then from that resistor to the to pin 7. B plus is 30 volts, but when this pin here grounds the LED, the resistor and all that stuff grounds, you know, goes down, the voltage goes down, and when this isn't grounded though, the resistors here are just floating, and so and on pin 7 minus the voltage drop of the LED, you're always getting near B+, plus, which is 27 volts. So the data sheet here for that multiplex chip, UA758, says right here, and I wish I would have seen this before I put the new chip in, that on pin 7, uh, the lamp driver terminal, when the lamp is off, the maximum voltage that can be floating there is 22 volts, and we had 27 volts. This absolute maximum is 22 volts. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I think the B plus on this stereo was originally lower, because I keep seeing signs of that, and uh, this is yet another one. I can't imagine that they did this on purpose. So what I did, so that doesn't ever happen again, is I, well first of all, like I said, this was probably, the B plus was probably originally a little bit lower and that's why we're having problems now. But the power supply doesn't have any sort of regulation. It, there's no like resistor that's doing any voltage dro drop or anything. It's just straight from the transformer rectified and then the individual circuits sort of take care of their own, you know, voltages and stuff uh, with resistors or Zener diodes. There's nothing at the power supply that I can do to put, put the voltage back down or that might be wrong that's causing the voltage to be too high. I think probably the design was made when at a time where the line voltage might have been slightly lower or maybe something's weird with the transformer, I'm not really sure. And, uh, let me show you a sort of little schematic of what I did. This is the original circuit, this is the big wattage resistor right here. And then there was another smaller resistor here, I think it was 330 or 270 ohms. And I think this is what was originally supposed to keep the voltage from floating too high when this part here wasn't grounded, but it wasn't. it just wasn't good enough. Uh, and of course here's the LED and the resistor for the LED and this ground symbol here is actually supposed to be the ground, the driver terminal at that chip right there. So I, I did this to it instead. Instead of a resistor here I added a 12 volt Zener diode. I changed the value for this resistor here and this basically stayed the same. So when this isn't grounded here by the lamp driver terminal this can't go beyond 12 volts because of the Zener diode. I, the original value for this one is supposed to be 680 ohms. That was the original resistor that was in there. Uh, this, that's this guy right here, 680. I put a 6.8 key 
a resistor in there, which is probably overkill in terms of resistance. I'm not really sure. I just sort of grabbed whatever worked. Uh, 6.8 mainly because that's the only, uh, I think probably like 4.7K would be ideal, but it has to be a pretty high wattage resistor because uh, it's got to dissipate a lot of heat to transform this voltage into this voltage and so it has to dissipate a lot of heat and uh, in terms of high wattage resistors this is the best thing I had 6.8 kilo ohms so earlier I had mentioned <coughs> that I had soldered the IC directly in here but now that I know it didn't it, it's broken too now I took it out and this time I managed to put a socket in there without breaking it and so we're going to measure the voltage at pin 7. Obviously there's no driver terminal grounding anything. This is just the voltage while it's floating. And you can see it's 10.76. The reason it's not 12 volts is because you have to take into account the voltage drop of the actual LED. But over here at the uh, cathode of the Zener diode, it's 12 volts. So that's never going to overvolt ever again right there. It's going to always be at a maximum of 10.7 roughly. And uh, you can see if I ground pin 7 here, the LED turns on. It's a very dim LED. That might be because that resistor over here is a little bit too big. But at the same time, these old LEDs, this is from like the 70s, weren't very bright to begin with, but I mean that's fine, that's totally visible, kind of seems dimmer on camera than it really is. Also I have my lamp right here. The thing is that when I ground the LED, the voltage at the shunt goes down to about 3 volts. Originally I thought that was because this, the value of this is just so high that it, you know, it just goes, the voltage drops a whole bunch. But now I just think that what's happening is that the actual LED is actually acting like a shunt, like a Zener diode. And the voltage we're measuring here, the 3 volts or whatever, is actually the voltage drop of across the LED. But I mean, that's fine. However, our adventure here doesn't really end there because, like I said, the replacement I see that I put in there got screwed up and I don't have any other ones nor can I find any replacements because it's an old IC, it's obsolete. I found that LM1800 is also equivalent to that one, to UA758 but I could not find any of those either easily. So instead of what I'm going to do is a bit of a strange solution and I'll tell you what that's about. <coughs> 